For me, this show started about two years ago when I got out of the blue a call from the uh, then curatorial advisor for Kitchener Waterloo Art Gallery, um, Alan Mackay. I mean, the rationale for them, as I understand it, and y you all can correct me if, if I'm wrong, um, is that there is this kind of historical coincidence that probably most of you know between um, Kitchener and Berlin, the, the, the fact that the city of Kitchener used to be called Berlin. I worried how I could possibly deal with that situation as somebody who wasn't living anymore in either of those places. Um, um, and also I worried about um, the fact that there have been quite recently, or have, there have been in recent years, quite a few exhibitions that have, that have had this kind of geographical focus on, of artists from Berlin. Um, I did come around to, to um, to thinking that there could be, though, a way of doing a show that would focus not on the very trendiness of the scene, but on the kinds of people who've actually helped to build that scene, make it what it is now, and make it, make it the kind of destination that it is now. I could just as well have, have taken the approach of, um, of the artist Daniel Seipel. His approach was to simply um, approach this show in a very in a willfully naive way and uh, saying, okay, if, if this is Berlin, then, well, and, and if this is the 20th anniversary of the uh, fall of the Berlin Wall, then I'm going to come to Kitchener-Waterloo and ask the residents to, uh, living on the border to knock down their fences. So that's what he's been doing for the past two weeks, is knocking on people's doors and asking them to take down their, their, their fences. We have 11 artists, uh, international and German um, in this exhibition and a total of a, a dozen works. Thematically some of the, of the um, um, ideas and issues that emerge probably quite naturally uh, given the, the artists that um, we've chosen are questions of how one shapes the city or how this, the planned city becomes, um, becomes um, uh, you know, a, a, a lived city. So you've got some of the artists in this in this show focusing on those kinds of questions of of um, of uh, migration, of the movement of people, of of uh, economic circumstance, and so on. So, for example, you'll have Tom's work um, that um, is a is a combination radio play and installation focused on the um, the story of the. Um, Sri Lankan national handball team who came to visit Germany on, on, supposedly on, to, on a, a playing tour to, to play uh, various leagues in uh, various teams in Germany and uh, who disappeared v very soon after they arrived in, in Germany and it, it turned out after their disappearance that there was no na na Sri Lankan national handball team and, and these um, these Two dozen people had managed to to develop this elaborate ruse to to trick the 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 German government and the NGOs that were supporting them into into bringing them over it, so that they could defect. Right. So it's it, it's a brilliant example of of um, of uh, the overturning of what of expected patterns of uh, of, pa of expected power relationships and patterns of influence. Or you'll have on the other side of the wall, so you guys can remember what the flag looks like on the other side of the wall, the, the work by Pierre Fuchs, which is a, a kind of pan-national um, uh, flag. Um, so a flag that's, that's showing the outlines of all of the um, recognized nations of the world and overlay, overlaying them on top of each other, so that none of them are ultimately legible anymore, um, and that the whole, the whole thing starts to become a, um, 
uh, somewhat more, I, I guess, more fluid or impossible to, de to define. You'll have um, a work like Nevin Aladag's um, um, projection in the other room that uh, alternates between shots of a young Turkish man uh, singing, uh, you know, German Turkish man singing traditional um, Turkish folk songs interspersed with these shots of of musical instruments that are essentially being played by the city. So you'll have a, um, a drum set that's being being beat on by raindrops, or else a harmonica that's being played uh, by by being um, stuck out the the um, window of a of a moving car. In certain cases, the, the, we have we have some works that are um, quite uh, uh, documentary in their in their approach. So this series of video interviews by. Um, uh, um, Jesko Fetzer and Axel Wieder uh, is also accompanied by a, a bulletin board um, with magazine pages from the many, many magazine articles that have been published ab about the development of Berlin since the, since the fall of the wall um, 20 years ago. The interviews are with various urbanists and other kinds of experts about uh, talking about the changes in Berlin since the fall of the wall. Um, so you have these very, th that kind of um, straight up uh, documentary approach to um, that you'll also see in the work of Karen Sander. There are two works uh, of hers. One of them is a projection shot from the top of the Berlin TV Tower, a very famous structure in Berlin. Um, and the other one is our um, a series of small uh, 3D renderings, 3D models uh, using rapid pr prototyping techniques of um, the German national football, women's football team from 2005. So in certain ways these are both very um, 